So in the previous video, we got Tomcat up and running, although there's nothing useful installed in this Tomcat at the minute. We've really just taken the base Tomcat image and we haven't yet done anything useful with it. But I just want to add in an extra video here. It's not very important, but you'll remember a few moments ago, we did this port mapping and I just kind of casually said, oh, we know that Tomcat is running on port 8080 internally, that's its default port, and we need to expose that port using the port mapping. But how did I know that Tomcat runs on port 8080? Well, of course, it's Tomcat. Most of you will have used Tomcat and you'll have probably guessed that port 8080 was what Tomcat always works on. So I was using some insider knowledge there, which is great if you've got that knowledge, but you might be working on some other server or other framework which uses its own obscure port number that you don't know. So how could I have found that out? Well, really, the, the answer is similar to the answer I gave previously to how do you find out what the command needs to be in your Docker file. If you go to the description page for this image, I reckon it's going to tell you in the readme that, yeah, and it's confirming here that it's using port 8080 right here. But again, that's only if you're lucky and it's got good documentation. How else could you find out? Well, again, if we follow the link to the Docker file and we go all the way down the Docker file, you'll see that there is a command right near the bottom, which is expose. 8080. Now this is a really odd docker command because I can tell you it doesn't do anything, <laughs> which seems odd. It looks like it is, you know, it is doing something really important. But the expose command is actually there purely for documentation purposes. The idea is if you're writing an image and you know that the software inside that image is running on a particular port internally, then as a courtesy, you're expected to provide this expose command. And that's so that users of this image can look at this and they can see, ah, oh, right, port 8080 is obviously being exposed by the software in this container. Therefore, I need to know about it. I need it for the port mapping, for example. I'm going to confirm that by going to the uh, Docker file reference manual online. And if I do a control F and just search for expose, and I'm doing this purely because on an earlier version of this course, I went on and on about how, oh, you need the expose command. Otherwise, the ports won't be available from your image. But it really doesn't. Uh, as confirmed here, the expose instruction doesn't actually publish the port. It's just functioning as a type of documentation between us, the builder of the image, and whoever's going to eventually run this image as a container. And using this line, they'll know what to use in the dash P command. So we don't need the expose command here in our Docker file because as we've seen, it will work without it. However, I strongly recommend as a good engineering principle that you do have an expose line in your Docker file and you will list any ports that are being exposed by whatever software you're running in your container. Then when we come to run the container, we know that we need to expose port 8080. Remember the number on the left hand side is completely arbitrary. We can pick any port that we like here. If for example, I, I, I make it a public port 80, then I'll access port 80 through the browser and that will be forwarded to port 8080 inside the container. Let's check that. If I remove the 8080 here and just have a raw IP address, then yeah, the page is still being displayed. Don't forget if you're running Docker desktop or you're running native Docker, then you can just use localhost here.